let's talk about the initial proposal and editing. So we've talked about parameters, we've talked about um, not changing the parameters, we talked about cement film thickness, um, and all of that cement film thickness stuff is really just academic when we're talking about um, using a screw retained crown, screw retained restoration. Um, but if we do end up splitting it, making a custom abutment and a separate crown, um, then yeah, we need to know that cement film thickness. And again, I would suggest leave those parameter settings alone. All right. Okay. So once we get our initial proposal, and my experience is generally the computer, uh, the software will do a pretty darn good job giving you a really decent proposal. Now notice that the trough is still there. We can still see this trough. It's still in the way. It still creates a nice ugly gouge. Maybe in later software versions they will have, have corrected this. Um, but the first thing you want to do when you get this initial proposal is number one, verify the position. Evaluate the placement of where it is and evaluate the shape. At this point, if you want to, now would be the time to get a reproposal, a recalculation, or if it gives you another wonky proposal, go ahead and do the BioJaw proposal yourself. Now, BioJaw is a discussion for another day. Um, it's a great software. This stuff is wonderful now that we can do this, but it's not something that uh, we're going to talk about too much now. Um, we're going to focus on the really digging into the, the basics of, of the implant crown design. So the first step is verifying the position and the placement. All right. So the first tool that I would suggest that we use is this position and shape tool. All right. So we'll always work large to small. We want to first position it um, with the position and rotate tool. All right. So we can get to that by either right clicking with the mouse over the restoration um, or go over to the tools over here and select position and rotate. With that, you can either move the crown any direction. You can rotate it around. Um, but what you want to do is place it ideally and worry about the occlusion later. I can't stress this enough. At this point, I would ignore all the colorations from the occlusion. Okay, just ignore them. Uh, focus first on where the crown should be. Um, ideally in relation to the buckle plane, you know, the buckle and ingle corridors. Um, position it where you want it to be. You can dial in the occlusion later. Get the crown, get the tooth where it should be in an ideal world. And worry about the occlusion later. But like I said a moment ago, work large to small. Start with the biggest movements and finish up later on. Once we've positioned it, the next step is the shape tool. Now I love this circular shape tool. Some people don't like it as much. But I would shape first and then smooth second. So let me let me clarify that a little bit. Right now we're working with the portion of the crown that is above the gingiva. Okay? We'll get to the subgingival portion in a minute. So for the supra gingival, this is really our key. Shape it first, then smooth it. Okay? Um, after we've positioned it with the position and rotate tool, this guy right here, the next thing is um, go ahead and shape it. Um, the anatomic and the circular shape tools are great. Um, anatomic shape tool, generally you can move whether it's a cusp or whether it's the whole entire lingual side or a cusp tip or the entire occlusal surface. The shape tools are great. Um, but start with the big to small, so the anatomic shape tool first, circular shape tool second. Get that anatomy, the positioning, get the contacts roughed in to where you want them to be. Um, big to small, again, big to small. Shape it first and then smooth it. All right. Now, once we've smoothed it, we're going to go below the gums. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim everything off. So I've uh, gone to the uh, display. Let's see. Yeah, display options. Um, and I've trimmed the model here. Okay. Um, and that exposes all of this subgingival portion of the restoration. So the first thing I'm going to do is smooth. Now, you remember before we shaped first right here. We shaped right here. Now we're smoothing first. Okay, so we're going to smooth this interface, smooth it with a, sh with a smooth tool, and then we're going to go ahead and shape it to ideal. Now remember we want it flowing and rounded, and we want to con consider the mill position in the block. That'll make a little bit more sense here in a minute. <clears throat> but below the gingiva, um, this is the portion that will become, if we opt to, this will become the separate hybrid abutment. Okay, um, and then the, the 
um, baseline, which we will we can edit again later, which we edited initially before, uh, will become that junction line where the abutment meets the crown. Okay, so below the gingiva, we're going to smooth first, then shape. Above the gingiva, we're going to shape first and then smooth. Okay. So here's the smooth tool. I'm smoothing this area. Um, you can kind of ignore a little bit of the gingival contact. I always want it to be flowing and round and consider that position in the, in the block. Um, make sure there's no dead space or gaps. You can see this is, of course, is a typodont, um, and so it's a little different, but fill in any of these dead spaces and gaps with your circular shape tool or anatomic shape tool. Um, you can turn the gingiva up and down. Um, you can, this is, you'll notice there's no gouge here, right? So I've turned on the lower gingiva. That's the gingival mask. All right. Um, so that's the gingival mask tool that I've turned on, uh, the gingival mask layer rather that I've turned on uh, to make sure that we can um, see through that gouge. So the gouge would be kind of cut through here. All right. We want light positive pressure. You want to kind of seal it, um, seal the crown to the uh, gums, if you will, make a nice positive pressure a little bit. Um, what am I looking for? Positive pressure rim around the crown, kind of a margin where the crown meets the gingiva. Um, now generally we won't have too much of an issue. If you've had a healing abutment on there, you'll roughly want to match the emergence profile of the gingiva um, and then evaluate your embrasures, okay? Um, we want to make sure that we occupy all the space so there's no area for food to collect if possible. Um, get a nice looking, natural looking crown as much as possible. Um, oftentimes that requires us to sacrifice a little bit of this gingiva, whether it's surgically, whether it's with our design, whether you need to get a handpiece out and do a little gingivectomy. Um, this, is, this is important. We want to make sure we create a nice long-lasting restoration, something that will uh, perform well um, long-term rather than something that just gets the job done. Okay? All right. Milling proposal. Final quality assurance check. Uh, take a look in the block, um, and you'll notice here I've got a couple of different block sizes. We've got an Emacs 14 and an Emacs 16L. These are L's. The L that you're seeing here incidentally refers to the size of the tie base. That's a large. Okay, so again, this is critical you have the right tie base. There are S's and there are L's, smalls and larges. That's the size of the tie base, and the size of the tie base is dictated by, guess what? The implant platform. So you have to make sure you have the right tie base for the platform, otherwise you're up a creek. Okay, so we designed it, we moved on, we got the proposal. So notice, if you remember, at the beginning at this step, we set this up as a multi-layer. But this doesn't look like a multi-layer. That's because I did not go in and use my tools to split it. So you can set it up as a multi-layer and then at the end leave it as a hybrid abutment crown. Right? You can leave it as a single one block restoration. You don't have to split it, but you can. So I'd suggest you always set up your implant restorations as the multi-layer abutment. That way you have that option to split it at the end or not. Okay? All right, let's talk about splitting. So assume I get to this point, all right, and I've decided that I don't want to split it. I just mill it out. But what if I want to do, what if I don't like where this um, hole is, where the screw axis hole is, and I want to go ahead and split it. Well, then let's split it. So the split's really easy. It's really pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to go back a step from that. So I was at milling step. I just went back. So I either clicked the arrow backward or I clicked on the design right there. Um, and then I'm going to go to this tool right here, which is only active, only active if you've set it up as a multi-layer abutment in the administrative phase. So set it up that way to begin with. Okay, always set it up that way I'd recommend when you're doing your implant restorations as a multi-layer. That way you have this option at the end if you want to. Okay, so we're gonna select the split after our final design. Uh, consider the need for it, do we really need it? And then evaluate the baseline location. Okay, so once we hit split, um, it's gonna give us this proposed baseline. All right. And that's the baseline that we initially set up previously um, as one of our early modeling phase steps. 
but we have not applied that baseline yet, so it hasn't split it. So at this point, you can edit it, all right? So a couple of things for you to consider. Consider the location of the baseline, aesthetics, cement necrosis concerns, and the height of the connection. If you have a very short clinical crown and the implant is, is not very deep, um, having two pieces of, of uh, two restorations in there, you know, an abutment and a crown, may be a very poor choice long term for either retention or for strength. So you may be better off having a single um, block, a monolithic restoration, a hybrid abutment crown rather than a hybrid abutment and a crown. Okay, so all these things are up to you. It's entirely up to you as the treating clinician. What's best for this patient? Uh, I would suggest, based on my reading and my research, generally speaking, generally, that a single block restoration, a hybrid abutment crown, screw retained, has a lower risk of cement necrosis um, and therefore a higher success rate. However, in some situations, it's just not doable. You know, whether you've got a, a crown with a the screw access hole exiting out the anterior of the incisal plane, we don't want to do that, all right? So select the choice that's going to be the best long-term choice based on your individual situation, the patient's need, and the clinical indication, okay? So we can edit the baseline. You can turn on and off these layers here as needed. There's our gingival layer that we took. Double-click to start, double-click to finish. Ensure that the lines are smooth. If you want to, you can add hills and valleys to aid in the seating and positioning. Um, just like you're editing a margin, edit this line, uh, you know, moving around the block. Whatever works um, is, is fine, but again, consider aesthetics, consider patient cleansing, and consider longevity of the restoration. Once you're done editing this baseline, you can check apply, and then it'll calculate it for you, okay? Selecting apply when you're done, um, we'll calculate the split at this point. Now what if I don't like the split? All right, so here's the final split. You can see the little ghost of where the abutment is. Looks great. And um, then you can move on to mill if you want to. Or see how unsplit is, is highlighted there? You can click apply and it'll unsplit it. It'll bring that back into one restoration. So you have a lot of choices here. You can split it then unsplit it. But if I were to hit apply here, it would unsplit it and bring it back in line. And then if I went back and clicked the split, it'll propose the baseline again so I can edit the baseline. So if you get a proposal and you don't like it, unsplit it, hit apply here, um, and then hit split again, it'll give you a proposal for a baseline again. You can edit it again. You can go back and forth and back and forth as many times as you want to. Okay? So this is just talking about how we can apply the unsplit and then re-edit the baseline if needed. And now that we have two restorations, just like with a bridge or with a multiple restoration uh, design, you now have a dot here. All right, there's a dot right there below the 19. Click that and you can now edit the crown or the abutment. That's a toggle between the crown and the abutment. Let's talk about minimal thickness. <clears throat> this is after the split and you notice that I've made sure the minimal thickness is now on. Well I've got some thin spots. Now again I'll preface this by saying minimal thickness is an arbitrary number that's set up in the computer based on manufacturer's recommendations. Now you may be using a material that's different. Um, it depends entirely on what you're using with regard to the material. No, those are fine. Okay. Yeah, are they fired or non-fired? It doesn't say. It just says serif blue block on one and then serif inlay on the other one. Okay, so yeah, use a blue block on, on the crown okay. and then the inlay could be that, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so minimal thickness is critical that we evaluate this. Um, it's really crucial. That, we're, that we ensure that we have a long-standing restoration based on the appropriate thickness of the material. So, double check your parameters right here, um, but you wanna make sure it's not too thin. So we can edit this thickness of the crown over the abutment, um, but you have to verify it after the split is processed. So if you do a split restoration like this, make sure you verify the thickness. Um, remember that the dark blue equals less than a millimeter. So you can see a little spot right there that's telling us there's less than a millimeter of thickness. So that means you have less than a millimeter 
of thickness between the outside of this crown and where it's touching the abutment. And that doesn't include the cement thickness. Okay? So you want to edit the abutment height in that area. All right, now you notice we have the abutment selected. And now I can enable one of my tools and I can move that abutment. I can shape the abutment through the crown as long as I have the abutment selected. Now if I go up there and select the crown, then it won't change the crown. All right? or it won't change the abutment rather. So basically we're just selecting which layer of the restoration we want to edit. So we're going to enable the circular shape tool and I'm going to edit the abutment to make that area lower. I'm going to lower the abutment down in to, to the, uh, the area where the implant is, okay? That'll give me more thickness of crown material. All right, basically I'm increasing the veneering structure to thickness. All right, now you see I've done this, I've kind of over exaggerated, I've actually dragged the abutment up instead of down. And you can see how the red is now showing. That means that abutment is coming up through the crown. Again, we still have the, the abutment highlighted. So using that circular shape tool, I can now drag that down. <coughs> Excuse me. So that the uh, veneering structure material thickness is sufficient. So I drag that down. <coughs> now then we've just got a couple of little itty bitty little patches of blue, which honestly are not too big of a deal in that area. So once I've finished editing, and I go over right here to the crown, um, it'll calculate it all, okay? Calculates it for me, and now we're ready to go. All right, on to mill. When you're ready, push forward or click on mill. And there it is. <laughs>